Hey, what is going on guys? This is Eli from Mobox Graphics and in this video we are going to be modeling a simple factory scene. In the next video we will texture and animate this model, so make sure to continue there for the full result. Or you can visit our Patreon page and download the full project file there. With that being said, let's jump straight into it. So in Cinema 4D we are going to create a polygon object and we are going to resize this something like 200 by 320 centimeters and we're going to make this editable straight away. Now we can go in the edge mode and let's right click and select the loop or path cut tool. We're going to make a first cut somewhere in the middle. Now here at the side you can see the offset of this but let's make it exactly 50%. Now we're going to make a second cut at the right side of it and let's use a fixed distance for this, something like 40 centimeters. And we're going to do the same thing at the other side. But for this you need to make sure you start from the upper edge and not the bottom one like we did it on the other side. It is just something you want to remember to get the exact same result. Otherwise it would start calculating the distance from the right side instead of the left. So when you've got that in place, we're going to select this middle edge. And we're going to right click and select the bevel tool. Let's change the mode to solid. Let's change this to 20 centimeters, so we have 20 centimeters on each side, which is 40 centimeters in total again. So now we have three cuts which have the same size, but we need to get rid of this middle edge. So select this middle edge, right click and select dissolve to get rid of it. So what we just created is basically the floor. So now we want to convert some parts of this to a wall. To do this, let's start by selecting the edges which we want to convert into a wall. So that will be this. That way we have these two bigger openings, which will be the garage doors. With the selection, press Shift and C to open the search box. And we're going to type an edge to spline. This will create a spline which is a child of the original object. So let's drag the spline outside of it. Now we're going to convert this into actual walls. So a first thing we need is a sweep object. And let's drag the spline inside of it already. But to make this work, we need a second spline. So let's go with a rectangle spline. And we're going to drag this under the sweep object as well. Right now it is very large, so scale it down. And I'm also going to add some lines to my display mode, so we can see what is going on. So let's make this wall something like 10 centimeters thick and 100 centimeters high. Now you can see these walls are centered to the spline, so we want this to be on top of the floor. The way I like to do this is making the rectangle spline editable. So we can go in the point mode and put an offset on this. You could see this as moving the points so we have an offset relative to the original spline, which is the bottom one in this case. So let's select all of the points and we can start moving this up while holding shift so we can move in increments of 10 centimeters. So you may notice it is going in the opposite direction, so let's move it down actually. And we also want the walls to be centered to the inside of the floor, so not overlapping with the outside. So let's also move these to the side a bit. Uh, in this case it will be minus 5 centimeters because we have a 10 centimeter wall. So we need half of it. Okay, so these are the walls and this is the inside floor. Now let's create a duplicate of the floor by holding Ctrl or Command and dragging the object to somewhere else in the hierarchy. Let's call this the ceiling. And we're just going to move this object up while holding Shift so it snaps to the grid. Let's go in the edge mode and select these edges at the middle. And you can dissolve these again by pressing M and N or using the right click menu. Now we have one polygon, so let's select this one. And we're going to add an extrusion to this by pressing D on the keyboard to use the extrude tool. And let's make this something like 10 centimeters again, so we have a uniform scaling on all the parts of the scene. I'm going to make yet another duplicate of this by holding Ctrl or Command again and moving this 10 centimeters again and this will be the overhang so we can select the front polygon again and just scale this outwards so it is an overhang easy stuff let's create another duplicate of the original ceiling and we're going to move this above the other one so we're actually playing with blocks you could say this will be the top floor Let's select the top polygon and move this up 90 centimeters, which will mean it is 100 centimeters in total, because it already was 10 centimeters. And let's also make the modifications on the roof already, so make sure the top polygon is still selected. And you're going to right click, make an inner extrusion of 10 centimeters again. 
and then use the extrude tool again with minus 10 centimeters to make it sink in a bit. Let's already create a roof on this, so make sure the top polygon is still selected. Okay, now let's continue by adding some details on the roof. Let's start with the air conditioning blocks. These are just simple cubes. We're going to make this cube editable straight away again. So we can select this bottom polygon. And down here at the position values, you can see this is set at minus 100 centimeters. And we're going to reset this to zero centimeters. That way the object will always be sticking to the bottom of the axis. It's just a bit easier to move things around and be very precise. So now we can hold shift again and move this up. That way it snaps to the floor. And now it's very easy to scale this however we want it to and still have it stick to the floor. So this is the first one. Let's create a second one and select both of these to create two more. And let's group these all together by pressing Alt and G. And we're going to try to center this. Now go inside of this group and select all the cube objects. And with these selected, we're going in the edge mode and press Ctrl or Command and A to select all the edges. Now with these all selected, right click and go to the bevel mode again. And we're going to click and drag to make a small bevel on this. But uh, first we need to change the bevel mode back to chamfer, otherwise you will not notice very much. Let's keep a very small size and also make sure we add some subdivisions on this to make it smoother. I think three subdivisions and an offset of just one centimeter is just enough. We are doing this to make the edges smoother and that way it will be more reflective when we add a metal texture to this later. Now let's continue with the roof exit. Uh, this will just be a cube object again, but it may be just a bit easier if you duplicate the ceiling cube. So let's make sure we also rename this. And we can start scaling again. To get the angle on the top part of this cube, we need to select this first edge. And you can see the axis of the handles are not being aligned like we would want it to. So to fix this, we can go and enable this button. That way the axis will be reset to the world values instead of the edge value. So now we can just move this up and get the result. Let's select this front polygon. And we're going to use an inner extrusion on this again. To make it a bit smaller. And then just move it down a bit so it overlaps with the roof again. Now with that polygon still selected, let's sync this in a bit with the extrude tool. And we are done. Maybe just scale it down a bit in my case. Okay, let's continue by adding some windows to the front of this top floor. We are going to start with a cube object again. And let's scale this down to 30 centimeters on every side. Now we are going to create a cloner and drag this inside of it. And set the mode to grid array. The count value may be different on your side. It will depend on the orientation of your building. In my case I will need to set a higher value at the last field and just one at the front field. And in the middle we want to set it up so we have two rows of windows. So with these yellow handles you can say how far you want them to go. By default the mode of this is set to endpoint, but we want the distance per step so we have an equal distance in between every window. So that way we can set those two last values to something like 40 centimeters. That way we have a perfect grid. But I still have too many of them, so let's decrease this to 7 in this case. And that way we have a perfect spacing on the windows. I already calculated this in advance, that's why the cubes had to be 30 centimeters. But it's not that hard to do it yourself if you would have some different dimensions. Okay, so now we have these cubes, but we want these to be cut out of the top floor. So let's create a pool object, so we can drag this top floor inside of it and also the cloner object inside of it as a second child. So the top floor needs to be at the top. Now we have these ugly black lines, which may be a bit distracting, so let's select the pool object. And we're going to click on hide new edges. But you may notice that this destroys the pool operation. This happens a lot when using the pool object. and. In my experience, it mostly has to do with too perfect geometry. We have these windows perfectly centered to the top floor. This means we can fix this by making it imperfect. So let's go to the cloner object again and increase the size on some of the values with just one centimeter even, or even smaller if you like to. And that way it is easily fixed. Now let's continue by creating the garage doors at the bottom. This is a similar process. So let's start with a cube object. We're going to make this just 100 centimeters wide to fit the gap. 
it can be just 20 centimeters high, it's just one panel in this case. And we're just going to make this something like 4 centimeters thick. Let's place this in. And we're going to make this cube editable so we can select the front polygon and use the bevel tool again to get a small bevel on the top of this. You may notice if you start dragging from the center of the polygon, it will not give any thickness. So make sure you start from outside of the polygon to get this curved effect. Okay, now we want more of these panels, so let's create another cloner object again. And we're going to drag the cube inside of it. By default it is set to the linear mode, which is okay. But we're going to increase the count to 5 of them. I already calculated how this will fit, so we need to change the distance between them. So let's go to the Y value here. And this should be 20 centimeters to fit, because the original panel is 20 centimeters. Okay, so now it's centered to this place. Let's move it back to the gap. You can do this by holding shift again. But in this case, to make it really fit in between the wall, we want this to be off the grid by 5 centimeters. So let's just add plus 5 centimeters at the bottom here. So now if you would want to open the garage door, you would move it up, but it is intersecting with the top floor, of course. So we will need to make a very basic garage door mechanism. You can do this the complicated way, but for this, because it is a low poly style, we're just going to do it the simple way. So the first step for that simple way is using the bend deformer. And we're going to center this to the garage door. In my case, I have the deformer still invisible. So if that is also the case for you, you may want to go in the filter options and enable the deformer again. So you should see these purple lines. Now let's scale this down. Something like 15 centimeters should be thick enough. And we're also going to increase the strength already. That way we know in what direction it will try to curve whatever we put inside of it. So in this case it will curve to the outside, but we want it to curve to the inside. So let's just rotate this bend object. Now we are also going to scale this on the other values. The last value, which is 140 centimeters in this case, doesn't really matter. It will not do very much anyway, so anything will do. Now we want this bend deformer to be seen by the cloner object, so the garage door. To do this we need to group these two together. So select the bend object and the cloner and press Alt and G to group them. You should instantly notice there is something going on when they intersect of course. So let's make sure the bend object is at the right position. It looks fine so far. We may even want to decrease the size of the bend, so that is being done by these two first values, which are 15 centimeters, so let's lower this to something like 10 centimeters even. Let's create a second garage door by just duplicating this first one. Maybe I also want to move the bend objects just a bit higher again, so we don't have any intersections when opening this. So you can see the bend object is being aligned with the top of the garage doors. That way if it is closed there is no curving going on yet. Okay, let's continue by adding some more details at the outside. We are going to create these oil tanks at the side first. So this can be done with the oil tank object, which is very convenient of course. Let's move this one to the side. And we're going to resize this with a radius of 25 centimeters and a height of 250 centimeters. And the cap height can be decreased so it isn't as round at the top and bottom. So 10 centimeters will do. What we want at the bottom now are some feet, so it isn't floating, of course. We can do this with a cylinder object. And let's just move it to the side here again. We're going to use a very small radius on this, so 3 centimeters. And the height of it doesn't really matter, it just needs to be large enough so we can have it intersect with the floor. So everything under the floor will be hidden anyway. So now we would like to place more of these in a circle. The easiest way again is using the cloner object and we're going to change the mode to radial. Now let's center this to the oil tank. You may want to do this in the top view. And let's drag the cylinder in the cloner object to see what happens. And we also want to change the direction of this to XZ in this case I think. Let's decrease the radius to something like 20 centimeters so it fits. And as it is right now these legs are very straight, maybe we want some rotation on this. So let's go to the cloner object again and go to the transform tab and we're going to add a rotation on the P value. Okay, now as a final detail we may want to add a torus object on this and also center it with the oil tank and just scale it down 
so it fits as a connection ring on these legs. I'm going to use a ring radius of something like 20 centimeters again and make the pipe radius 2 centimeters so it isn't too big. Let's create a duplicate of this and just scale this up a very tiny bit. And now we are done with this oil tank, so let's select all of the parts, group them together and give it a name. And that way we can set the final position of this relative to the building. And I'm also going to make a second duplicate of this again, so we have a nice pair. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. Let's continue by adding an outside wall, something like a fence or something. We can do this by duplicating the walls object. And we're just going to modify this original spline at the bottom which is indicating where the walls should be. So let's use the point mode, so we can select some of these points. In this case we don't need these two middle points at the front anymore, because we don't need the gaps anymore. So let's select these two and hit delete to get rid of them. And now we can use the rectangle selection tool to select, for example, the top points and move these up a bit. You may also want to hold shift again to keep it clean. Let's do the same thing at the bottom and also at the left side and of course at the front. So this looks okay. I'm just going to add some random variations on this to get rid of the symmetry. Also, if you want to add more of these corners, you may just select one of the points at the end and use the move tool while holding control or command again to duplicate it so we have a second point. It's that easy. But you may notice if you do this at the other side as well, it will not behave like you would expect it to. So I don't exactly know why it is doing this, it is just very annoying. So the easiest way to fix this is making sure you are also holding shift while duplicating the point. That way you can select the original point and move that one even further while holding shift. And then once selecting both of them together, you can move them back in place. It's a bit of a workaround, but that way it is fixed. Also, the fence is a bit high, of course, because it's still set at the same height of the walls. So let's go to the rectangle polygon, and we're just going to modify the bottom value here from 100 centimeters to 50 centimeters. But if we go in the side view, you can see it also is raising this up. So let's compensate that again by selecting all the points and moving these again. Okay, one more detail we would like to add to the sides of the building are these tubes. To create these I use the pen tool, so let's go in the front view or the right view in this case, so we can see the front of the building anyway. And we're going to create a first point somewhere just inside of the building. It isn't easy to create a straight line in Cinema 4D, so what you would like to do now is just hit escape so we only have that one point and make sure you select the point. We can hold control or command again and move it to the side, and that way we are sure it is a straight line. And then we're going to stop somewhere around here, so we can create a second duplication to the bottom. So make sure it is under the floor level. Now let's select this point at the corner here. So with that selected, right click and select chamfer. And just click and drag until you get the curve you like. Now we have a spline, so let's create a sweep object again. Also create a circle object again. And combine these two inside of the sweep object to get a tube shape. Of course the original circle is way too big again, so scale it down. And I think that looks okay. Now at the corner here you can see we have this kind of geometry. This means it is very subdivided. So in other words we have a lot of polygons on the corner piece, but we don't have so many polygons at the bottom and the left side. And we will need these because we will be deforming the tube, and because of that we need subdivisions. To do this, you don't need to make this object editable. You can just go to the spline object and you can just set the intermediate points to something like subdivided or you can also use natural. But in this case, I prefer subdivided. You can also play around with these values at the bottom, but for this, it should be fine by default. If you want to see how to apply the textures and animations on this model, then make sure to check out part 2 of this video. I'll see you there.